first guest tonight is a terrific actor, a fantastic man. He is a great chef. He is an astronaut. He is uh, he is a renowned uh, uh, neuroscientist. That's true. Uh, Jeff, your eyes have gone out. Oh what? Oh my. <laughs> Jeff, I'm over here. Craig, I'm over here. Craig. Craig, just go on without me. I'll okay, just listen. I'll do it. I'll listen. Bye, this guy's a lovely man. He's an astronaut. He's a show business giant. He's getting terrific reviews for Foxcatcher, which is in theaters now. Please welcome the lovely Steve Carell, everybody. Steve. <laughs> Together. All right, all right, all right. Wow, I haven't seen a reception like this since Drew Carey was here last night. <laughs> That's quite something. Yeah. You look good, man. Thanks, you too. You look uh, beardy. I'm beardy. What, 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 why? Um, late. For a role or just? No, just for fun. Yeah, yeah. no, it looks good. Thanks. Did you do it for the Movember? Did you do that? No, I just started to grow it and thought, well, that's... Keep going? Yeah, I'm just going to do that. I tried it for, uh, you know, a mustache for Movember. I just, I look like a kind of creepy pimp. <laughs> Mustaches, are, that's, that's a tricky look to pull off. I had a mustache in high school. What? I grew up... You mustache. are a god. Well, <laughs> they called me Pepe in high school, uh, short for Pepe Le Pew. Oh, yes, the uh, skunk. The skunk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's uh, my lacrosse team. I grew it because I thought I'd look more intimidating uh, on my lacrosse team. Why did they call you Pepe Le Pew? Are you a very smelly gentleman? No, no, no. That was, that was because of the mustache. Oh, because of the mustache, yeah. not because of any smells that might emanate from you. No, I smell good. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I know, I know. Pretty good. Sort of like uh, Parmesan cheese. Is that my smelling now? Yes. I've got into this fad diet, Steve, and I, I, uh, I'm, I'm trapped in it now. What is your fad diet? I'm a vegan now. Oh, really? Absolutely. How is it a fad? But would you it's not a fad. It's not, obviously not a fad, but, uh, but I'm a fad type person. How long have you been doing that? Mm, well, a couple of hours. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, a, a couple of months. Does it, has it affected you? Are you different? Are you, is your skin clearer? Yes, I'm thinking? almost translucent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm over here, I'm over here. Are you, do you eat meat? Um, yes, I do. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I could tell from your robust, healthy cheek. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't eat meat, I wouldn't be able to grow this beard. Oh, so you're saying that if I, you know, you know, got a bit more meat in me, I would be able to, you know... It is a scientific fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, that's good. How are, how are you enjoying it? Is it good? I'm you actually feel, okay with it. Yeah, I'm kind of, I don't know, I'm kind of mystified as to why I'm doing it, but I'm doing it. I support whatever people want to do. I don't, you know, I, I don't... Well, except Nazis. <laughs> I don't no, like... I mean in terms of what you're eating. Oh, I, I see. I, 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 like, I support everybody. I'm like, well, I don't support Nazis, Steve. Come on. You know what, though? If a Nazi wanted to be a vegan, fine. <laughs> <laughs> You're a more tolerant man than I am. <laughs> I'd be like, no, you finish your sausages, Hitler. <laughs> I don't know. It might work out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What did you do for Thanksgiving? Did you just have it at home? Um, yeah, we, uh, we went back to Massachusetts. Oh, I like it, Most of my there. family is back there. And yes. So we had a big, big family Thanksgiving. Cold, though. It was cold. We got a little bit of snow. Did was... you ski? I did not. No. Do you ski? I do ski. Do you ski or snowboard? I ski. I see. So you're wealthy. <laughs> you know I do. Yeah. <laughs> do you know, I didn't start skiing until I was 45. And I'm, really? I'm 52 now. And you love it. I do now, but the, my 40, when you start skiing at 45, you're going to get hurt. <laughs> yeah, things tend to crack. Oh, man. When you land, it's not like, oh, I'm a child. I'll walk this off. It's like, bam. Well, ah! see, you know what? Kids, too. Kids are fearless because yeah. they're so close to the ground. And, and they're a bit stupid. And they're a bit stupid. They're a bit stupid. And yeah. they go faster than they really should be going based right. on their ability. 
but they figure it out and they learn. But when you're an adult learning how to ski, that's tough. It's My very wife bad. is is the last couple of years has been learning how to ski, and it's it's hard. There's a mental block there for sure. And also when you when you're you know going down a hill uh, as a fully grown person saying. Pizza, French fries, pizza, French fries, pizza, French fries. Right. Trying to slow yourself down. People look at you weird. People judge you. People do judge It's like you're a vegan Nazi on the slopes. I'll let that go. It's all right. Nice watch. Oh, thanks. It's at the wrong uh, time, though. It is, it's after midnight now. It is after midnight. <laughs> I'm so sleepy. I'm not. Thanks. Thanks, plants. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's Foxcatcher about? Foxcatcher is about this, uh, wow. It, it's, it's, a, it's based on a true story. It's a guy um, named John DuPont. He was the heir to the DuPont fortune, chemical right. fortune. And he was an avid sportsman. And he was a fan of Olympic wrestling. So what he decided to do on his estate uh, was to invite these Olympic wrestlers to train on his estate mm -hmm. and install himself as the coach. Uh -huh. and he really didn't know anything about wrestling. Um, and he invited the, uh, the Schultz brothers, who were two of the best wrestlers of the time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and the movie is about their about wrestling? relationship. It's about wrestling, but it's specifically about the relationship between these brothers and DuPont. And do you do any yeah. wrestling in the movie? I do. I see. Yeah. <laughs> I really am sorry I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> I will be seeing it very soon. I'm, I'm sorry you haven't seen it either. I, I am sorry I haven't seen it. I like the idea of you oiled up in trunks. <laughs> that's pretty much, th that's the calling card. That's why people are going to want to well, see it. Well, yes, because it's you oiled up in trunks. It's what America's been missing for years. It's a very, very dark movie. Is it it's, really? Yeah, it's a very serious drama. Um, Mark Ruffalo and Channing Tatum. Oh, um, yeah. The Schultz brothers. They're excellent. Um, they're both very good actors. I met Channing good. Tatum when the last time I saw you down in uh, New Orleans. Right. He's a very nice man. Very. Fabulous abs. He, he, well, <laughs> definitely. But he's great. He's yeah. great in this movie. Uh, he's a Bennett bright Miller, dude as well, isn't yes, he? Yes, he is. Yeah. Bennett Miller directed Capote and Moneyball, and he directed mm -hmm. this as well. Mm. It's, it's, I think it's quite good. Well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I had an idea for a film. Tell me. Well, it's about a Nazi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he sees the error of his ways. Mm -hmm. And he's hungry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but nothing's open. Nothing's open. <laughs> Except... A field. <laughs> <laughs> So he walks out into the field and, and grabs a big handful of dandelions <laughs> and thinks, mm. well, I should eat some of these delicious dandelions. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you are vegan master. We'll be right back to see you around. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I was just talking to Steve Carell about our uh, new sitcom. <laughs> Na Nazi vegan. Mm -hmm. Nah, it's never going to work. No one's going to want to do it. Anyway, you don't go TV anymore. You're in movies now. You don't want to do TV anymore. I'd do anything. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I'm not particular. No, I think you are. You've moved on. It's really? Yes, you're doing very serious films about wrestlers. I'm too big a deal now? You're too big a deal. You've been on posters. You're, 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 do you have your star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame? Uh, no, I, I put one there myself. Well, that counts. That still counts. And what about uh, your, your hands outside the Chinese restaurant? Same thing. Restaurant? I, I, just, I just went out with a chisel and started. To... Right. You, so you got kind of like a, a shape of your hand, <laughs> like with one finger, just one finger up. 
<laughs> right. No, I have. I'm not. When you moved here, did you go around all that stuff? To I look did. It up? Yeah. 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 Me too. I went down to Hollywood Boulevard and I, I, yeah, I put the hands in the handprints. Yeah, yeah, and all of that, and then it, it gets that. Once that afternoon is over, then it's years of boredom. <laughs> We were driving around, and my wife and I saw one of the uh, tour buses, the Hollywood tour bus. Yeah, yeah. Which is essentially a van that has the, the roof chopped off. Right. And she said, Steve, st roll down the window and say something. Like, this will freak them out. So I was like, okay. So we pulled up next to the van, and I rolled down the window, and I said, hey, everybody. And nobody batted an eye. <laughs> it was like, it was the, and I was like rolling it back up. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have done yeah, it. Yeah, I knew I was testing you that. You were tempting the fates, tempting man. You fate. can't do like, that. Like, hey, you have no idea. Yeah, it's, no. And they couldn't, you know. I don't know. Sometimes I think that, uh, I wonder, how do they manage to fill the tour? Because once you've done the uh, Chinese theater, and uh, then it's just a couple of graveyards, isn't it? I don't, I've never done the tour. I don't know. I, Let's do it. OK. <laughs> Let's do it together. Well, it's midnight. I think it's closed. I know a guy. Okay. You could well, I think you go around, but I think you could say, that's Fred McMurray's house. You know, it could be anyone's house. Fred McMurray. Fred McMurray. Fred Everybody McMurray. knows Fred McMurray. Yeah, like the, about 80% of the audience going, oh. oh that's why I did it. Well, good, yeah. But you could point to any house and say, that's where Sylvester Sloan lives. And then you can just make it up. Right. Right. Okay. You're not That's right. See them. You know, you're not. You, they. You know. And and it, it, there's always the possibility that someone could come up uh, and roll down and go, "Hey, how you doing?" How and you it doing? is, in fact, you know, Sylvester Stallone. Right. I should have done it as Sylvester Stallone. Have you ever, have you ever met Sylvester Stallone? No, I never have. I have. He's been on the show. Really? Yeah. He's he's not that tall, but he's almost th three miles round. Really. <laughs> Very uh, compact. And uh, it's quite scary. It smells good, though. Oh, really? <laughs> Not Parmesan? Not Pepe Le Pew. No, uh, he's... Uh... Do you know the thing, I, problem I always had with Pepe Le Pew? It was the same plot in every cartoon. Right. A cat gets a tin of white paint dropped on it, and then Pepe Le Pew thinks that cat's a skunk and tries to... Ooh la la! <laughs> it's true. I'm just trying to explain Pepe Le Pew. Right? That's how I explain it to my kids. <laughs> you know, my son said, who's 10? Can I watch this? And I said, no. No. And I described it exactly as you exactly. described it. Because it's not, it's not for kids. No, no. Have you ever seen an episode of Pepe Le Pew where that didn't happen, where the cat didn't get paint on it, looks like a skunk, and then Pepe Le Pew tries to m mate, mate with it? There was one episode. Oh, Guasso. Yes. <laughs> that Pepe Le Pew was dropped in a vat of white paint. The cat thought he was a cat, and the cat wanted to Ooh la la. him. Ah! And we come full circle. Let's turn it to Steve Corral, everybody.